I've got, we are live. Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, <coughs> it is me, but as you can hear, it's a it's a, a, a poor version of me this morning. It, is there such a thing, Al, as a poor version of me? I never. Is, is never. that possible? <laughs> I don't anyway, think. Anyway, this is a poor <laughs> version of me. I don't know why I'm smiling because I feel really lousy, but. <clears throat> but we thought we'd do this show because it's been two weeks. Christmas has come and gone. New Year has come and gone. I'm sitting here, uh, still in New York City, live from New York, as they say. <laughs> uh, I'm still in New York City with my friend, Karen, who came for New Year's. Karen, do you want to just pop in and say hi? Hello, everyone. We're, we're actually, she, we're not sitting on the sofa. Uh, and um, we, we have very limited space. And I have instructions from my daughter to say, don't let the camera go on anything that isn't tidy. In the meantime, everything behind me is absolutely immaculate, right? Yes. She keeps tidy house. Anyway, so uh, so here we are. <coughs> I have, excuse me, I have Al with me. I hope you'll all forgive me for coughing and spluttering. And I did not do the, um, the healing uh, minutes for the last three weeks, actually, because I've been actually much worse than this and lost my voice for quite some time can you believe that i survived losing my voice really can you believe that i survived losing my voice now i've got this really sexy sexy voice going on right here right now and <coughs> and a cough <coughs> and so on and so forth and my christmas has been my christmas and new year has been very quiet because I've had to stay in the whole time and do nothing. We had to cancel Christmas Day. We ended up having takeout from just around the corner because it was the only place open. It was a diner. So that was our Christmas Day lunch instead of going out to a fancy restaurant, which we planned to do. Uh, my grandson was also sick. So I don't feel so bad. This is a gift. This is the gift that he gives to me every year. Isn't he sweet? Throwing up and everything. All of the stuff. Anyway, Al, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm here with my spirit guide, Grey Eagle, who's laughing at me. Uh, I, I don't know why he's laughing at me, but he is. Uh, I'm here with Karen, and we have Al in Colorado. Al, do you want to say something to everybody? No, just good morning and Happy New Year. Hope everybody had a wonderful holiday. Uh, yeah, what, what what would you say to those people who didn't have a wonderful holiday? Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm one of those people because even though I was dreadfully sick for the majority of the last three weeks, every day was a wonderful day because I always tried to find the good spot in the day and my grandson and my daughter were the good spots in the day. There you go, and 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 uh, you were forced to just kind of stay home too, right? You didn't didn't have a busy schedule and all I, that. I actually, you you can't believe all of the glad rags that I brought with me. You know what glad rags are, don't you? They're the clothes that you go out and have fun in. <laughs> I had a beautiful black and white jacket with sparkly stuff all over it. I had a black jacket with diamondy things all over it. I, I was set to go out and have fun this year for New Year's and for Christmas, and uh, <clears throat> none of it happened. Not, <laughs> not, not, not any of it happened. But that's okay because you know it's hey, worse things could happen. Uh, so I'm fine. So I take all my glad rags home with me, and then I just have to find a time in the future when I can <coughs> wear them again. Excuse me. All right. So do, do we have anyone now? Because I can't. I'm, I'm sort of working from my iPad in. I can't see anything going on. I don't know what is going on, if anything at all. Do we have anybody out there? Listening? We do. We what? have Priscilla and Margaret and Jeanette and Brother Nate and Albertine and Dean. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of Myra, a lot of people on Terry. So uh, a lot of people looking forward to uh, hearing from you, and I'm sure that they're happy that you're 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 persevering through a, a national yeah i probably won't be able to speak for the rest of the day however i'm glad you mentioned dean right because dean i want to know the results of the christmas cake i did actually put up a video of how to decorate the cake it's on youtube um i did it with my 
grandson, my grandson, helped me to decorate the cake. We have the leftovers of the cake here. Do you think we should show it, Karen, while we're on air? Mm. There's only half left and it's a bit crumbly and everything. But I'd love to know how Al's Christmas cake went because yeah. the amount of alcohol <coughs> that he insisted in putting in it, uh, I, I thought this is going to turn to pudding. I, I hope, uh, Dean, if you're listening to me, you managed to decorate it. Uh, even if you didn't decorate it my way, but you can find how to decorate it on YouTube. And I hope it tasted as good as mine because mine. Karen, would you like to say something about it my Christmas excellent. cake? Yeah, well, I've had a piece every day, maybe two pieces a day. <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, it's delicious. It's delicious, really delicious. So, if Dean could actually type something in there for us at some point about his Christmas cake. And how it was, because after all, something may look really great, but if it doesn't taste great, don't make it again. So, all right, let's Dean, have a question. Dean, Dean said he ate Victorian Christmas cake for New Year's Day. We were inebriated from the fumes. <laughs> um, he said he sent he sent an email that was wonderful. <laughs> uh, he probably sent an email to the office, so I didn't get it yet. So. Uh, well, good. I'm glad he liked it. Did everyone else in his family like it? He didn't say. Uh, Did he finish it? I mean, you have to be very brave to finish this cake because this cake is the cake that keeps on going and going. <laughs> I mean, uh, we've got half of mine you left. Can't eat a lot at one time. You can't eat a lot at one time. It is quite rich and delicious. And did he decorate it? Did he put marzipan on and did he put royal icing on and all of that stuff? I want to know all about it. And when he responds, I'll let you know for Thank sure. Thank you. All right, let's have a question, shall we? Okay, Priscilla, <laughs> Priscilla is on. Good morning, Priscilla. Um, and Priscilla asks, hello, Rosemary, or says, hello, Rosemary. My brother is watching your show for the first time today. He says hello and asks if you have anything for him. No, his not name, a thing. His name not is enough. Harry. Okay. His name is? Harry. Harry. Good oh. morning, Harry. Here's what I have for you. I have a lovely smile for you. <laughs> uh, everything else has gone by the board today. As you can see, I'm not well. Too, isn't that a fantastic excuse for doing absolutely nothing at all? I'm too sick, Harry. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but it's great that he's it's, not, right? It's, it's, thank you for watching anyway. And for sitting, thank you for twisting. Did you have to twist his arm up his back to watch? Uh, anyway. Uh, I hope you enjoy the show. It's going to be a little bit different today because, as you can probably hear, my voice, Harry, is not usually this dark and s silky and seductive sounding. <laughs> right, Al? Am I right? Karen, you. am I right? Yes, you're I right. I don't usually sound like this, right? But <clears throat> let's have another question, shall we? Um, uh, Margaret uh, has a comment. She says, hello, Rosemary and Carolyn, who may be watching somewhere. I'm, I'm so hoping you're having a show today. Is this is a day off work and I can participate? So she's happy that you had the show today. And who is this again? This is Margaret. Margaret. Good morning, Margaret. I'm so happy that you're able to take the day off and enjoy with us. Are you are you probably still are we still enjoying um, the New Year? I, I, think, I think a lot of people took these days off. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it was as uh, we should as yeah. we should. Yeah, right. Most people have New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, or a lot of people have New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, so they take the rest of the week off. So I have to tell you, the very first Christmas that I ever spent in the States, I, I mean, you know, for Christmas we do a lot of preparing. If if we if you're if you're a person like me who celebrates Christmas, makes it a family time, and makes it that one meal in the year. I know that in America you have Thanksgiving, so perhaps. People don't consider Christmas quite so big a deal. But in, for me, anyway, especially, and especially because I'm celebrating a special birthday, the birthday, uh, <clears throat> we always have a very, we, not this year, obviously, but we always have big a big Christmas, lots of food. And in England, we either have off, you know, it's usually Christmas Eve day, Christmas day. The next day is Boxing Day. And then we have a week. Now, I know not everybody does because factories do have to go, but a lot of factories close down, a lot of shops close down. But we generally, we have a week. But the first year I was here in the States at Christmas time, we had a fantastic Christmas day, the food and so on. And then traditionally, Boxing Day the next day 
is when you eat all the leftovers, which are always so yummy. And um, I can remember, uh, you know, everybody, everybody was get, getting ready, leaving. And I sort of confu- I was confused. Where are you going? We're going to work. What do you mean you're going to work? It's, it's Boxing Day. You can't work on Boxing Day. Uh, and uh, Christmas here in the States is simply one day. Uh, in England, it's at least three or four days. For me, it's at least two weeks. <laughs> That's how I feel. And I think, you know, so I'm glad, Margaret, that you're able to uh, take the time. So um, uh, Jeanette asks. Uh, oh, Jeanette. Uh, she says, Happy New Year, and wanted to ask, how is Kachoro? I hope he's feeling better. I don't know. Well, I do know how he is. I check in with him every day. My friend Mary Lou is taking care of him for me. He's actually, she says, he's eating, which is a good thing. But, you know, Gregel assured me before I left that he would be okay while I was gone. So I'm, so, And I know that he is, and he's eating okay. I get to see him again on Monday. I know he can't wait for me to come home and I can't wait to see him. But thank you so much for asking. That's so nice of you to ask that question. <coughs> Let's have another question. Sorry. So, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, folks. You're just going to have to put up with me. If you want the show, this is it. This is how <laughs> I am today. So Albertine asks, uh, she, says, hello, Albertine. she says, hello, Team Rosemary and Happy New Year. I read your books again. Uh, thank you, Little Flower. Uh, she says, can Grey Eagle, like Scott in the book, The Eagle and a Rose, also dance? Then I dance with him. That's what she said. So I don't know if it makes sense to you. Uh, well, Grey Eagle calls me his little flower. He's always called me his little flower. So that makes perfect sense. I'm not quite sure who she's referring to when she's referring to Scott. S C O T, as she spells it. I don't know. S C O T. Can Grey Eagle dance? Pardon? <coughs> Karen's saying something. Can Grey Eagle dance? Do we dance together? Was that the question? Can he dance? Yes. Oh boy, can he dance? Yes, he's laughing and doing a little thing as we speak. <laughs> and uh, we often dance together, but in more ways than you could imagine. We dance uh, when we uh, go out and beyond and into the spirit world. We dance together. We dance together when we're communicating. We dance together when he's giving me healing. I can remember uh, I was in England a, a while ago and uh, and became very ill very suddenly. And... Um, I collapsed. I was rushed in the ambulance. On and on it goes. Pain, the pain was excruciating, and they wouldn't give me anything until they'd figured out what was wrong with me. Uh, once they figured it out, they were pumping morphine into me like there was no tomorrow, which I was very grateful for at the time. But I was in a great deal of of pain, and the only way that I could deal with that pain was to dance with Grey Eagle. Was for him to take me. Uh, and uh, so I moved, literally left my body behind in the hospital room. Uh, all, you know, friends around me, uh, everybody worried. And I just went into Gregel's teepee, so to speak. And uh, he took me in there and we danced and we sang. And uh, my body was doing its own thing left here on this earth. And I was someplace else with him. Uh, and he basically took me under his roof and danced with me. And anyone out there who has had that experience might know what I mean when I say uh, that, uh, they da- that we danced. Okay, let's have our next question. I don't know if I answered that, Albertine, but anyway, there we are. Uh, but let's have our next question, shall we? A uh, comment from Dean. He said, just finished a walk in the clouds, and he enjoyed it as always. Thank you. Uh, uh, Twiggy, Twiggy Leaf. So I don't know if I call Twiggy. She says, good morning, all. Good morning, uh, Twiggy. Can you define spiritual growth a bit more? Is it faith in God? Is it trying to be a better person? What can we do to grow spiritually? What a great question. It is a great question. How do I define <coughs> the spiritual growth? Excuse me. I don't think it's faith 
although faith, our faith, as, as we walk through life, our faith can dim or it can uh, become brighter depending on our circumstances. There are times when we seem to lose faith and this, uh, there are times when we hold on to our faith despite all the struggles that we're having. So faith is a, it's a big part of it, but is it spiritual growth? I don't think so. I think our spiritual growth is, uh, has to do much more with our inner spiritual knowledge uh, what our soul um, needs, our soul needs food to grow, to become light and to become more enlightened. And that food uh, often comes in the way of uh, something that is wise and something that, you know, what we have those in life. We have those aha moments. Al, I know you've had them where you struggle with something, you struggle with it, you struggle with it, and all of a sudden, and it could be a piece of machinery that you're trying to fix. It could be a cake that you're trying to make. It could be a uh, something you try, anything. It could be anything at all. And it's not going right. It's not going right. And all of a sudden, you have one of those aha moments. And all of a sudden, it, you're able to fix whatever it is that you think might be broken. And I think our spiritual growth is sort of so, so many aha moments uh, that uh, we have those aha moments and we realize, oh, that was what that was about. Oh, that was what that meant. Oh, this is what I'm feeling from this and this is what I'm understanding from that. When something actually touches our soul and touches our heart and we have that aha moment and we, we sort of get, <clears throat> even if we only get it for a moment or two moments, we get something, we, it's like a light bulb goes on and our soul reflects, you know, the knowledge that we've suddenly acquired in that, in that ha-ha moment. And that's when our spiritual growth becomes more and more. That's when we grow in a spiritual sense, I think, through those ha-ha moments that we have. Does that make any sense to you, Al, when I've said that? It does, yeah, it does. <laughs> it's connected to your real world experiences and what you expose yourself to, right, Rosemary? So if you. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, you can go through the same experience through, you know, through, in this material world of ours, you can go through the same experience over and over again and never have an aha moment. You never get it. It's almost like, you know, the, the, the guy with the boat, we've said this before, a guy's drowning in the sea and a, a fisherman comes by and, you know, he says, Oh God, you know, let me help you get in the boat. And the guy says, no, no, it's okay. You know, God will save me. And then a bigger boat comes and then a bigger boat comes. And each time the guy is, you know, uh, trying to be helped by these people to be saved. He says, don't worry about it. God will help me. And then he drowns. And then we get to the gates of heaven. He says to God, hey, why didn't, you know, what was going on? Why didn't you help me? And God said, I sent you a fishing boat. I sent you a trawler and I sent you a great big liner. What more do you need from me? Sometimes we see these things. We don't recognize them as what they are, gifts that are being given to us so that we can learn and grow. And so sometimes God has to really push our nose in it and really make us, you know, get it and understand it. And sometimes we still don't get it. We still don't get that aha moment. But spiritual growth our soul needs to grow. That's why we're here. Our soul needs to grow. It needs to light. It needs to become more enlightened. Now, faith is a very necessary part of that growing process because without faith, we're not going to bother, are we? I mean, hey, without faith, who cares about God anyway? Who cares about spiritual growth? Because we don't have it because we don't have faith. So who cares? But faith is a big part of that. It's strange that uh, she should mention faith uh, faith in this way because for some weird and unaccountable reason I've always had faith I've always known God can't remember a time in my life even you know when I was two years old going to the church 18 months old actually going to this church when I could walk and <clears throat> and just feeling that I was home and part of something and I've never felt that not being home, that not God ever part. I've never felt that never being a part of something bigger. So I don't know why, despite everything, I hold on to my faith, but I'm thank I thank God that I do. And uh, I have no idea why I don't do anything particular or special. But I love those ha-ha moments when all of a sudden 
the light shines and you think that was what that was all about and that little bit of growth takes place you know okay let's have our next question shall we she has a three years of follow-up uh she says rosemary can see people in the spirit world can she see people who are astral projecting too I do, yes, I can. Just don't bump into me on your way out there. You know, just <laughs> I'll avoid you and you could avoid me. <laughs> so, I do, see, yes, I can see lots of things. I can see auras and energy. Uh, I think when people are astral projecting, their aura shines particularly bright and particularly different kinds of colors and, you know, uh, ways that if you can see and you can understand auras, it, it can tell you what somebody's thinking, what somebody's feeling, what somebody's doing in that moment. <coughs> so we have a we have a comment from Myra. She says, "Happy New Year." Good Thank morning, you. Myra. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks for for the recommendation. Um, I already have read Eagle and the Rose, and reading it makes me so happy. She says. Well, it is my favorite book of all time. Of course, I love that book. I do really love that book. And, you know, I mean, it's 22 or three or something years. 1996 was when I, uh, that book was published. It took me a long time to write it in bits and pieces. And then I had a great editor in the, in the, na the name of Joanne Davis. She worked at Warner Books and she was fantastic. She took my work. She organized it. Why don't you do this? Why she made fantastic suggestions. She never actually told me what to do. She just made amazing suggestions, which I took the majority of. And uh, she made that book, uh, you know, she just put that book into perspective. I've never read that book in all these years and not cried at some point, <laughs> probably for myself. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, did that really happen to me? No, just kidding. <laughs> it's like, it is a very emotional book. It is my favorite book of all time. I think that uh, A Matter of Life and Death and uh, and the new one, A Walk in the Clouds, is a, uh, they come close to that particular book. Um, but Soul Signs is, well, I mean, I love all my books. Why wouldn't I? Thank you for that, my darling. Anyway, Al, let's get back and have another question, <laughs> shall we? Um, Maggie, <laughs> I love this. I'm feeling really sick and really horrible and hot and all that and coughing and spluttering. I hope I'm making some sort of sense to somebody because I could be very feverish at this moment and <laughs> talking absolute nonsense. And we're getting some lovely, lovely comments from people, which is really nice. Yes. Um, Margaret or Maggie, it's Maggie. She says, uh, I guess before you were talking about Grey Eagle laughing at you, uh, she said, she said, Grey Eagle is laughing because you can't catch the cold and doesn't have to deal with <laughs> growing up. <laughs> um, and she says, LOL. And then she says, uh, her mom used to say glad rags uh, too. Um, and then we have a question uh, from uh, Brother Nate. Good morning, Brother Nate. Sister Rosemary, we pray that. I Nate, I do. I really love the fact that he's so consistent and open. And anyway, go ahead with the question. So, <laughs> he thought I'd say that because it's it is the new year after all. He says, "We pray that one day you would do a chapter or a book on people who you <clears throat> have had otherworldly experiences with. What a joy that would be! Would you, in the future, pardon my asking?" This is not the first time he's asked. Now, look, Nate, this is, uh, you find different ways to ask the same question. <laughs> but the answer's always going to be no. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> well, actually, <coughs> I can't say no, because the truth is, I really don't know what's going to happen, do I? I could, I could have an epiphany of some description and start writing all sorts of different stuff. You never know. I'm all, all already writing uh, children's books for my grandson. I've written about the little old mouse who lives in the cellar, and I've written about the land made of jello and all that. I've, anyway, go ahead. I might share those stories with you one day. Al, oh, let's have another one. Come on, let's get going here. Uh, so Dean yeah. responded from you, your question before. He said he, he did decorate the cake. 
Um, yes, <laughs> yeah, come on, Dean. I want to know how. Did he make the marzipan? Did he do all of that? Did he? He might have sent me a picture. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. We have Mary from Maryland. Uh, she says, my mama, my mama spent Christmas in the hospital with pneumonia. I'm happy that she is better. Does the spirit world have any messages for her? Um. I was going to say no, but I mean, pneumonia is, you know, sort of, this is what I suffer with every year, bronchial pneumonia. Isn't this wonderful? Don't, don't, you know, fortunately, I refuse to go into hospital. I put myself at my daughter's, in my daughter's hands. I go and hide somewhere, someplace. I try my very best to be inconspicuous in those times, but I know how hard it is for people. And I know what it's like to uh, deal with pneumonia. So I'm going to send, if you could let me have your mum's name, even though she's fine now and I'm presuming out of hospital, I'm going to send her some love and a little bit of healing from me anyway. Next question. So uh, Maggie asks, Rosemary, I had to send my um, border collie, Max, onto his oh, next journey. No. It was sudden and we found he had lung cancer. Was, was my daughter and my parents there to meet him? I'd hate to think he was confused. You know, I was going to say exactly the same as I've been saying all morning, that I'm not, because I'm too sick really to, to, to be absolutely sure about being absolutely accurate. But I, I've heard, Maggie, and I know you'll understand this, there's a resounding yes coming from them. That's all I need to say to Maggie. She understands me. <laughs> All right, so we have um, Aiden uh, asked if you know Nick Gers. Nick Gers, do you know Nick Gers? I don't know, I might. Isn't that weird? I know a lot of people that I don't really know. And does that make any sense? Does that mean I'm feverish at this moment? I do know a lot of people by first names, but don't always know them by their second name. So I don't know, I don't know who he is. Who is this person who's asking? Aiden. 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 Good, Aiden. Yeah. Good, good morning, anyway. And we hope you're enjoying the show. And I don't know if I know him or not. So I can't say specifically no or yes. You'd have to give me a little bit more detail about him. But off the top of my head, the answer would be no. Okay, so we have Rosie. Morning, uh, Rosie. I have always felt close to my mom's sister who was killed at the age of 19 before I was born. I was wondering if maybe you think I could have a connection to her uh, somehow. With, uh, I don't know why I'm diving in here. Be sorry, Al, before you've even finished, but you, no doubt about it to me. There's absolutely no doubt about it to think she's your angel. That's what I think. In the, and why I'm so positive about it, I don't know, but I am, without a doubt. I think that this, this lovely lady is your angel i think she walks with you and i think you understand the connection better than anyone realizes so how nice that you have your own angel there nice <coughs> so we have um maggie says hi samantha in the background i think samantha was walking around oh, in the she, background. Did she stroll around in the background yeah. <laughs> um uh, the Twiggy says, uh, well, we've gone through all the questions, so we have a couple of people asking multiple questions now. Uh, Twiggy says, I'm almost done reading Soul Signs, still not completely sure what my sign is. Maybe water. Oh. All I know is I'm Maybe. definitely not. I'm Maybe. Definitely not. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder if. <laughs> Such a water sign. Karen, come here. Yeah, come into the sign. picture. Hello. I don't know. Do I like green? <laughs> Do I like blue? Or do I like green? Or do I like blue? Or should I do this? Or should, should I, I do, do that? that? <laughs> Typical water sign. <laughs> There's your answer. Goes with the good, good, Goes good thing. with the flow. And is always, water signs are always the first willing to compromise. And they strive to find compromises within their family. Some water signs less than others, but nevertheless, water signs are those people who like compromise. Fire, fire, the, the rest of us, of course we love to compromise, but only if we have to. <laughs> <laughs> and we always want to. 
Water signs always have a need to compromise, to keep the peace, to make sure that other people are happy. And, um, you know, so earth signs are very capable of compromising. I think Al, you do a lot of it. But if there is a way for us not to compromise and to get the same results, we'll take that route first, won't we? <laughs> Generally speaking. <laughs> Uh, we have um, Priscilla response to your comment before. It wasn't it wasn't so hard with my bro Rosemary? He even went ahead and read your book Eagle and a Rose and thought it was a great book. So Priscilla had, had mentioned this is the first time his brother and, and, Har and Harry right? His, uh, Harry yes. Harry. Yeah. Yeah. Look, thank you, Priscilla. But somebody must have bought him the book, and I'm assuming it's you. I'm giving you all the credit for bringing your brother on board. And Harry, I hope you'll forgive that I'm all sorts of croaky, cough, coughing, and <coughs> what have you. And um, and I'm glad to have you on board. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks all. Thanks to all of you for joining us today. Okay, Al, carry um, on. Do you Maggie, do? Maggie has a comment in response to um, what you said before about her sister uh, meeting the uh, Kali uh, in heaven. Uh, thank you, Rosemary, that warmed my heart and brought happy, sad tears. Um, I know what that feels like. Isn't that funny that we that we often cry when, when we're happy? We're so happy that we, we're sad. It makes us sad that we're so happy. You know what I mean, right? Yeah. You know what I mean now? Yeah. Are happy, you with me? Are you with me? Tears. Karen, do you know yeah, what I mean? Totally. Happy tears, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but sometimes it's like when I when I see my dad, I can remember uh, when he came to visit me one time. Uh, at first, I actually thought that I was dreaming. And I remember sitting up in bed, being much more awake than asleep, but still wondering if I was dreaming simply because the reality is that my father was actually sitting on the bed with me. So naturally, I'm a questioner and I'm skeptical. So I'm thinking to myself, even though I'm seeing him right in front of me, I'm thinking, you know, is this, is it really real or is this just me wanting it to be so? And he put his arms around me. He was actually telling me that he was sorry for some particular issue or another. He put his arms around me. Now, my father wore a jacket. My ex-husband actually gave him this jacket Whenever I think of my father or I see my father, I always think of a, a, a soldier's uniform because he was in khaki most of his life. He was a, he was a, a, a soldier for all of his life. <clears throat> so, uh, but towards the end of his life, the last, let's say, five or ten years of his life, he had this jacket that my husband gave to him. And it was quite a nice jacket. It was tweed. And he would wear it all the time. He loved this jacket. For whatever reason, he loved this jacket. And this particular time, I'm sitting on the bed and I'm looking at him thinking, is it real or isn't it real? And he held on to me and I put my arms around him and I put my head on his shoulder and I felt this rough, you know, stuff on my, just it felt really rough on my cheek. And I looked and he was wearing the jacket that he really so loved. And it was then that I realized how real this was, how real it was and how real my father's presence was there with me. And I remember crying and I was happy, but it was also sad. And I was crying because I was sad because of all the things we could have had and could have done and could have been together that life prevented us from being. But I was also happy that he was here and that he survived and so on. So there were happy tears and sad tears mingled all together. Very, very weird. Anyway, I thought I'd just share that. I'm rambling, you see. It's the fever. <laughs> uh, Rosie has a comment. Thank you so much for confirming uh, that her uh, mom's sister is her guide. It truly touched my heart. Uh, Brother Nate. But, but you know what? I'm only telling her out what she already knows. I'm just confirming what she already knows, which is lovely. That's lovely for her. And Nate says, and Nate says, thank you, Sister Rosemary. We will continue to hope. Uh, something tells me that yes, you will heed the call in the future. Oh boy! Happy New Year <laughs> to you and the team. 
Um, we have, uh, and Mary commented her mother's name, who was in the hospital with pneumonia. Her mother's name is Bernadette, and all prayers are welcome. To Bernadette. That was for Bernadette. That was not for you, Mary. That was for your mommy. Um, and Twiggy says, thank you, Rosemary. Uh, Dean uh, asks, uh, do you, does the three-time rule apply for dreams? I had three consecutive dreams on New Year's night that I was talking <laughs> to the one. Wishful thinking or question mark? Um, you should always go with the three-time rule and you should always pay attention to it. Well, you know, wishful thinking or whatever, does it matter? Because it was the three-time rule. But in order for you to find the one, Dean, you've got to get out of the house. You've got to pay more attention to you than to your children and your grandchildren, which is going to be hard for you. Uh, just for a little bit, you've just got to put yourself out there, sweetheart, and not be afraid. That's all I'm saying about that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Terry asks, anything new f info for the classes? Hi, good morning, Terry. <coughs> <coughs> oh, well, as you can see, I've been sick for three weeks, and actually before that, then we had to get the cookbook out, but yes, um, we are into January, Al, so I'm looking to Al to see when Al will be ready. Al is looking to me to see when Al... I'm, I'm oh, we, I think we could be ready within a week or two, depending on your health, obviously, um, but I think we could be ready within a week or two to uh, launch everything. Okay, so, so then let's watch out for February, and then... It might be the end of February, or it might be the very beginning of March, but it's not going to be any later than that, I can assure you. So all of you out there who want to join the online classes and know more about them, email me, rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com. <coughs> or I'll where can they go? Because we did put, did you put the videos out yet? I'm not sure. We didn't put the videos out, but we'll put, uh, within the next week or two we'll put the information about the course so that they can see the intro video we'll do that <laughs> yeah i mean it's been christmas and new year and it sort of gets a bit hectic doesn't it yes correct. and then my grandson's birthday is february 12th so sort of you know sort of it all comes together but as soon as that's over and done with i think we can really focus on this and concentrate on it we are definitely doing this without a doubt uh, I know some of you might think, oh, gosh, she's been talking about this for ages, but we're definitely doing it, and it will be before the middle of March, absolutely, right? I, I think before that, yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll strive for that. <clears throat> it's like a fine wine, Rosemary, right, we said? Is it really? <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? It, it, <laughs> it gets better with age. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was me. I thought I was the fine one. <laughs> Twiggy asks, are the classes for teaching healing specifically? No. The classes are uh, certainly for... Okay, what are the classes about? The classes are about, uh, as uh, we talked about spiritual growth earlier on, finding those aha moments finding ways to improve so that we become more aware, we become more knowledgeable, we become more knowing of things, we become more sensitive, we become more in tune with not only our own soul, but we also become more in tune, not just with the voice of our soul, but with the voice of those other souls who are out there. We want to become more in tune with people around us, we, when I say in tune, I'm talking in a spiritual sense. We want to become more knowledgeable about what, uh, what makes other people who they are. We want to be able to connect with other souls who feel the same way that we do, who want the same things that we want, who are seeking knowledge. So, you know, we're going to, I'm going to be giving you sort of a series of exercises. Uh, the good thing about this course, I think, Al, which is unusual, it's a little bit different than most online courses, I think, is that we also, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we, sorry, we have the lessons, but then throughout the week, following the lesson, we're able to go, can you explain what we do? We have a face. Sure, we have a face. 
We have a Facebook. Can you explain that? Al is much better at the technical stuff. <laughs> so, so every week there will be a lesson that everybody has certain tasks to do from you. Um, you'll have uh, a vi an intro video, right, to talk about the lesson. And then we'll have at the end of the week or two weeks or three weeks, depending on how long the lesson is, we'll have a group um, a, a Zoom session with you where they can – speak to you live and ask questions, <laughs> respond to your questions about the lessons. But in between those times, there's a Facebook group where uh, people like myself and I think Karen, right, and Chris uh, will be in there as well as you. Who, are, who let me say, point out, you're all students of mine. Correct. Uh, and also Dean is going to be, um, you know, that uh, mediator between, he's going to be the one doing the lessons as well as, helping students so he's going to be mediate he's going to mediate between uh the the teachers and the students uh so he can basically give it to us from his point of view or from the students point of view i understood that but i didn't understand this so so to speak so we'll be able to get it from both sides the teachers have already learned they've already been through the courses have already they already know what they're doing i hopefully know what i'm doing too uh, but having a mediator like Dean, who is going to be working as a student, but also connecting with the teachers as well, with 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 the um, with the tutors, uh, is I think going to be extremely beneficial to all of us. Yeah, and, and it's and it's a it's an evolving process too, right, Rosemary? Where oh, this, sure, yes. So that'll 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 be helpful um, in that regard as well. Sometimes there'll be a, a written. Uh, lesson you know you, you'll have to re read stuff and go through the exercises with along with all the your the other students but then there'll be times when we'll have a video we'll have the whole lesson will be a video and it'll be you connecting with me me connecting with you I'll talk about what it is I want you to do and then you can come back at me and ask me all sorts of questions which will help hope hopefully help you to to uh, you know, to to try things out. It's going to be a series of things that you are going to have to do during the weeks, during the days, during the months, during the years that this course that you want to continue with this course. Little exercises, ways of being able to communicate, simple things like meditation, simple things like um, water divining. I know it's weird. I mean, how can we water divine? Well, water divining is very easy once you know how to do it. It's easier for some people than it is for others. When I say water divining, not necessarily water, we're going to divine all kinds of things. We're going to be able to use our energy. And it's about building our energy, creating new energy, learning what to do with that energy, learning how to put it out there. So energy is about healing as well. So even though we're going to be doing, you know, things like meditating, divining, um, uh whatever it is, what is that thing you hold with, you, you know, you hold something in your hands, what is that, I can't, my, my brain's gone dead here, uh, just t t touching, an, uh, touching an object and touching an object and um, getting energy from an object, I'll show you how to do all of those things, again, as you're building your energy, we're going to be, you know, you're going to be building that energy towards healing as well, so it's all part and parcel, I mean, I find when I'm talking just on a show like today, Al and I, we're talking on the show like today, but our energy is such positive. Mm. And so, excuse me, just trying my best here. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, so positive and so out there. And so, you know, important. We're building our energy all the time. and We can use that energy in whatever way we want. Using it in the right way is always a good thing to do. And using it for healing is something we all of us can do. So I'll be teaching you all of those things and more besides. Excellent. So uh, we don't we don't have a lot more questions. I actually have a question, if I could ask one, that uh, my wife Christine and I were talking about. Um, she was born uh, about a month and a half sooner than me, and you've spoken in the past about how our spirits are exist before we're born, and then they kind of choose the life, the physical life that they want. Does does is does it matter when you're born as far as how old your spirit is? Or can one spirit be older than the other, even if they're, they're not in sync? Uh, so in the it's not, <coughs> excuse me, 
<coughs> it's not as much about how old one spirit is above another. It's about how how much a soul has progressed, how much knowledge a soul has. Uh, some of us, as I've said earlier on, we can have experiences all through our lives and still be naive at the end of our lives, wondering what we did all of that for. Or we can be those people who learn and grow and we have our, our moments and we hang on to them and we use them when we make them work for us. So a soul can be more or they can be less um, spiritually aware spiritually attuned uh, depending on how they took their moments what they did with their moments throughout their growth process one thing can i say yeah. something because yeah. when we did the work with rosemary before remember when you did the classes before one thing i noticed is that different people were able to pick up on different exercises better than others. So different souls yeah, were so, maybe well, more stronger in some areas than other yes. areas. And I think you said that too, when we especially were learning about our senses, some people could see better, some people could hear better, some people could feel better. So the soul, I guess, well, every, every, for every one of us is born with, um, our five senses now you might argue and say well the blind man wasn't born with the gift of sight mm -hmm. the deaf person wasn't born with the gift of hearing so they were only born with four uh you know um uh excuse me <coughs> they were only born with four senses but actually the person who is born blind can often see much more clearly than the person who has sight. The person who is born deaf can obviously often hear more clearly than the person who, ha who can hear you know, perfectly well. Um, it depends how we're looking. It depends how we see. It depends how we hear. It depends how we use those five senses, but we're all born with those five senses. God brought us to this earth, giving us tools which we can use. And those tools are, you know, some of those tools are the five senses that we have. Um, and um, <clears throat> we learn, again, through the, through the course that we're going to be doing, we're going to learn how to build and how to make those senses more sensitive, more aware, because it's those five senses that we have when joined together in the right way that create that sixth sense that everybody seeks so desperately. They ignore the five common senses that they have, thinking that the sixth sense is somewhere out there. You know, it's sort of, it's almost unreachable. But if you know how to develop and to become more sensitive with those five common regular senses that you have, when you get all of those senses in tune and perfectly in tune with each other, which we're going to be talking about and learning through the courses, then once you get them all in tune, then that sixth sense can become more in tune. Now, some people can only develop that sixth sense to a certain level, and some can develop it to a greater level, lesser or greater level. My sixth sense has me... Uh, you know, way up there. Uh, that doesn't mean it's necessarily better. Somebody can have uh, the sense of sight, of seeing, of being able to see the spirit world. And it can be enough for them. It can be perfect for them. They, that's all they need to see. That's all they need to use. That, you know, that precognition, that, uh, that um, you know, that the third, call it the third eye or the central you know, the um, chakra point, which sees everything, which sees the spirit world, which sees further than the normal eye can see. So everybody has something and everybody has something that they can develop. You might be the person who is absolutely fantastic at the pendulum. For whatever mm -hmm. reason it is, you can be so sensitive to that. But I'll give you another exercise that you you feel that you flunked. You're not flunking. As long as you're trying, you're not flunking anything. 
but <coughs> being able to use one of our senses more and to be more in tune with one of our senses is you know is just as important as being in tune with all five of them but we're going to strive to be in tune with all five and see how we go from there it basically will help you to raise your level of consciousness you when i say that your level of consciousness means your level of awareness of what is out there which is beyond mm -hmm. our normal vision our normal hearing our normal sight we, i'm going to teach you to raise your level of consciousness to a point where you may catch glimpses of things you never thought were possible <clears throat> i think i want to join that course myself where do i go to sign up oh we have rosemary, rosemary, rosemary altea.com is where you go to sign up yes oh. um we have <clears throat> deborah says happy new year to everyone i'd love to be part of your classes <clears throat> uh, my only day off is wednesdays um there will be synchronous elements to it, but you can always watch it after the fact if you can't make the synchronous piece. Yeah, you do not need necessarily to be physically present on the day that we're doing it uh, because this is something, it's recorded. It's something that you can not only, you know, if you, if you miss the live uh, class, you can play the recording back. But then this is the point that was I was trying to make earlier, Alan, if you could just speak to that again. The point is, <clears throat> excuse me, it doesn't really matter whether you get it live or not, because when you go into this joint Facebook group and everybody's talking and everybody's expressing their, you know, their opinions and their, you know, whatever they got from it, it it's, you know, Anyone who missed the live show gets drawn into that and is helped by that. Is that right, Alan? And they can answer just like you do on Facebook now, except it's a private group for only the, the people in the course. Um, they could answer at midnight. They could answer at 6 in the morning. They could respond whenever they'd like. Um, it's, it's, it's asynchronous, so it's not – you don't have to be anywhere at any specific time. At a certain, at a certain point in time because it's all there for you. Correct. And we will be having – those uh, sessions where you can go into Facebook, you can chat to the other students. I don't know how it works, but I'll tell you how it works at some point. But you chat to the other students, you put your concerns or your or or your views or your thoughts or what have you in Facebook, and then uh, our tutors will go into Facebook. Um, you know, we've got four or five tutors on the go here. They'll be going in and out and making comments and helping you with what's going on. And you'll have Dean, who comes as the as the student, as well as the you know the mediator, who's also able to be able to say to the tutors, I don't know if you saw, but so and so is having a tough time with this exercise, uh, and so the we're all we're, we're then we're all aware, and of course from time to time I shall also go into Facebook and put in my tuppence worth. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you know, have my say about things. So it's a very, it's going to be very interactive, isn't it? Uh, Correct. We hope, Al. Very interactive. So um, we're close to time. Just to give you a um, <laughs> reference on that, we have a couple more questions. Um, we have a comment from Jeanette who says, "Even so, six, uh, so you still share it. Thank you very much. Uh, praying you feel better uh, and praying for your puppy too." Um, we have uh, Garden of the Gods, who joined us late, uh, uh, says, my mother is dying in hospice. I almost cried uh, for her, but I can't quite come out, and I have not cried in eight years through the deaths of loved ones. Um, the, the, the only thing that I can tell you, it's going to sound like a platitude, is uh, I'm so, first of all, I'm so glad you came on this show and I'm so glad you shared that with us because sharing is the key. Being able to talk to people, being able to talk to friends, being able to talk to family, sharing uh, what you're feeling and, sh you know, sharing your fears and or just simply sharing the story, my mother is dying. Sharing those things, it's very important that you share. So I think you've taken a very big, brave first step. I know we're strangers to you and it's sometimes easy to share with a stranger than it is to share with a friend. I can tell you your mother's going to be fine. You I'm a little worried about. 
So I want you to try and share. Maybe you could join the show next week or the week after, whatever it is, and share with us how you're doing because we're always very keen to hear. Uh, and I know there are people also on this show who can relate to you, <coughs> who may want to share with you as well. Um, then we have a, a question <laughs> from Bailey. I missed what you said. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we, have, we have a question from Bailey. Uh, Rosemary, does your gift give any side effects in reference with your human physical body? Does it exhaust you just by working with, uh, they say, the dead? Uh, no, actually, I'm going to say, but only because uh, I'm very fortunate to have had Gregel and for him to have been able to help me to to, to know how to invigorate myself, to put that energy back. Because let's face it, when you go into a hospital situation, you've got six kids and they're all dying and you're standing there and the parents are looking at you expectantly because they want you to do something. Uh, just the emotion of it, the emotion from the parents, the emotion from the children, is, it, it's, it's, it's tough and exhausting and emotional and emotionally draining. But luckily, uh, Gregor has taught me how to build up that energy. So I, when I'm using energy, I'm making energy too. So I try to stay very invigorated. Of course, there are times when I collapse on the sofa. I'm going to do that right after this show, actually. Karen, Karen's going to be making me lunch. She's going to be running around after me, making me something nice to eat. But, <coughs> but I do understand what you're saying, and I do understand that there are many people out there who do this work who do become extremely exhausted by it because they don't know how to build back their energy. Uh, Gray taught me something a long time ago. Important. Learn to say no. Learn to say no. It's okay to say no. You can't be all things to all people. You just can't. Because, uh, because I'm not God. None of this is God. So learn to say no, but learn to do the best you can too. Sometimes I'll drag myself out of the house. I literally drag myself out exhausted. All I want to do is sleep and I'll go into a hospital. And within moments of walking into that hospital, I am back to how I need to be. I am replenished. My energy is replenished. I thank God for that. Um, if you're a person out there listening and you do good works for people, whatever your role is, you could be a nurse working in a hospice, you could simply be a, a good neighbour. Uh, learn to say no when you feel exhausted. Sometimes you just have to say no and give to you because you're just as important as the patient because if you're exhausted, you can't help anybody. So, you know, be a little selfish with yourself, feed yourself, then you can feed others. I, we, do we have any more questions? We, just, we have Candy who uh, <laughs> said, I really, all she says is, I really need your help. Uh, so any advice for her? Maybe can I <laughs> email or any other advice for her? Well, she, she needs to email me because I'm really not sure. We, you know, it's a little, little late, unfortunately. Um, if you need help, I can, all, I can tell anybody out there this with an absolute certainty. If you need help and you ask God for help, you're always going to get it. You may not get what you want, but you will always, without fail, get what you need. Even if you don't necessarily want it at the time, you'll always get what you need. Because that's my thing. So thank you all. Uh, we've had a great show. I hope I, hope I haven't been too croaky. <coughs> I haven't disrupted your day too much. I like to think that I've enlightened you and given light and love. Karen is leaving me later on today. She's going back to cold, cold Canada. And on Monday, I'm going back to warm, warm Florida. I'm so excited. I was like, finally, I get to go in the warm. Uh, thank you all for joining me today. I know it's been tough for some of you because after all, we're busy people, aren't we? Um, I hope that you have an absolutely wonderful and amazing new year remember Al and i are going to be doing our everything is attitude tomorrow at 6 p.m right Al? correct eastern right. 
So we're going to be doing that tomorrow. And you can see my attitude is very positive, uh, providing this did not absolutely wipe me out today. Um, I should be there tomorrow, six o'clock with Al. We're going to be doing everything is attitude show. If you'd love to join us or just to participate or just to sort of give us a few comments, we're always we're always uh, willing to have that, aren't we, Al? Correct. So in the meantime, until I see you again, either tomorrow at six, Standard Eastern Time, or whether it's uh, next Thursday, um, please, 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 please have a very, 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 excuse me, <coughs> I'm so sorry, a very, very blessed day. <laughs>